This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, and you're listening to Python's Paradise, your film and music show. And, you know, I have a wonderful guest on the phone for, with us today. You know, the tagline was work sucks. <laughs> and I think we can all agree with that, especially when e- even Garfield doesn't work and even he hates Mondays, you know. But, you know, I got a wonderful guest on the phone and his character in this movie loves work too much. We're talking to the wonderful Todd Duffy who played Brian. The, is it Chachki's worker? That, that was me. That was me. <laughs> I, I will go down in infamy as that guy, the guy with flair. <laughs> well, I need to ask, how many pieces of flair are you wearing today? <laughs> you know, I, there, there, was a, there, was, there was a line somewhere it, over the past 20, almost 20 years now, uh, where I, I just, I woke up and I said, no flair today. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can make it throughout a day with, without flair. So you're not wearing 37 pieces of flair? <laughs> I, I, I took it down to about 18 back in uh, two, 2007, 2008, you know, around the 10-year anniversary. And uh, it's just slowly kind of trickled out of my, out of my, uh, my wardrobe, unfortunately. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I was mentioning beforehand, before I had John here, I know that it was, it was great to connect with you, and I'm really glad that... Uh, you looked up my um, my stats and whatnot. You mentioned you had some harrowing interviews and whatnot. And I, I think it's really bad when uh, uh, journalists uh, make it about them as opposed to about their guest. That's there's a lot of that out there. You know, it's uh, everybody needs a name and everybody needs 15 seconds. And sometimes they jump on the shoulders of people who have had 15 seconds to to get to theirs. If if that's the way it works, so be it. I just I know I've got other things in life I want to get to, so I'm not I I don't mind helping people out, but you got to let me know that I'm helping you out before I'm I'm put in the in the limelight. Well, I'll tell you, like I said, I watched one interviewer have both Quentin Tarantino and Robert Downey Jr. both shut him down because he turned an interview with Quentin Tarantino into an assault about violence in his movies. And with Robert Downey Jr., it went from Iron Man 3 to uh, being about his former drug use. Insane. Yeah. Like, how do you expect people to want to talk to you if, if, if that's the fodder that you're bringing, you know? And, and I just heard an interview with Bill Cosby. And, and this interviewer, I couldn't believe it. You know, he goes, it brings me no pleasure to bring this up. And I'm like, it's the only thing you wanted to talk about. <laughs> you really don't have much else going for you right now. We're going to have to talk about it. Yeah, it's, it's like if you're like for me, like I'm a big Lindsay Lohan fan, but I bet you TMZ would hate me if I interviewed her because I would never bring up her her court case. I'd just talk Mean Girls for an hour, you know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if you've if you've got a if you got a slant or you got an angle that you're ready to run with, uh, I guess the the person you're interviewing doesn't really matter. Um, it's more about the the colors that you want to paint it. So it's it's nice to be able to speak with with somebody who's who's proficient in in the world of entertainment and understands what all it takes and and is here to celebrate it rather than to knock it down. Well, you know what? My favorite kind of audience and the audience I'm really aiming these interviews at yeah. are the midnight crowd because they really get involved in the movies they watch. Absolutely. There's, Absolutely. There's, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. You're, cult, you're cult movie fans. Uh, people who are willing to come out at, at midnight and, and, and spout back the script to the screen. It's, those, are, those are fun groups. Oh, those are really fun. I've had a few interesting experiences with those. But I, I find that in the long run, any stuff going on in the media, in a few years, it's not going to matter. But the real cult film fans, they just want to know about the movies. It, and that's it, you know? It's it's not about it's not even about the actor so much. It's not even about the script so much. It's just about what was that like, that, that awesome moment in time where that all came together and became something bigger than all of us, you know? Well, before we get to office space, I, I just want to know, how did you break into the business? How did you get started? 
A uh, strange story. I was a diabetic as a kid and uh, also very short. And my mom needed to keep me busy, uh, but because she couldn't throw me into sports due to my size, you know, all the coaches were saying he's just too small. He's going to – they're, they're, they're going to destroy him out there. So she said, well, let's get you into a dance class. Um, now, we're in Houston, Texas in the, the late 70s, early 80s at this point. Uh, so boys running around in, in uh, leotards and, and, uh, and, and tutus wasn't really – the thing that was going on back then but my mom somehow made it seem like it was a funny thing and we got a sense of humor going about it and at the end of every year uh there would be a recital for the parents you know to show them what all their money for all these classes was going to and so we'd have a jazz show and we'd have a tap dance uh, show and we'd have a ballet show and being that i was the only boy in this dance uh school i got a lot of attention and I just ate it up and fell in love with the stage. And my, my dance teacher told my mom, get him into theater school. So by the third grade, I was doing Your Good Man, Charlie Brown, and Oklahoma, and you know all the, all the standards, but we were doing it at a, at a child level. Um, and by the fifth grade, I was doing professional theater, uh, getting, getting awards in, in uh, Houston, Texas, on some of their more esteemed stages. And it just kind of went from there. Um, I went to an arts magnet high school, um, and from there uh, into college, and then you know all of all of the the, the golden jobs started coming up. But I'd, I'd say by the time I was out of high school, I had paid for college with all of the acting work I had done. You mentioned you were you, you you're still diabetic, huh? I am type one. Yeah, I'm I'm one of the guys who has to pull out the syringe at the dinner table. Oh, is that that hard? It's 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 bad on first dates, but other than that, I'm not <laughs> all right with it. Yeah, I, I it must be like you, you're not allowed to have any sugar, huh? Well, it's it's sugar, but it's it's more about diet. It's more about just understanding what it is that you're putting in your body and what you need to do with it. You know, if you're going to have a hoagie at lunch, you should probably stand up and go walk a mile or two just just to get that energy going. Um, but in terms of insulin. Yeah, you need to know, hey, the, the body needs to break that down so that it can be used uh, later on to, to, to help restore all of, all of what you're doing. And then, you know, we've got all these type 2s that are, that are popping up now, and that's, it's kind of disturbing to see so, you know, an entire generation or several generations of people who have just not learned how to take care of themselves. You know, health just isn't a, a, a factor anymore. I find now, like, like I'll go to my brother's apartment and I'll bring snacks. I find now I eat a lot of fruit and a lot of, uh, I shouldn't say vegetables, uh, like a variety of vegetables, but I do like raw carrots, celery, and any kind of pepper, and I'll have exactly. it with some kind of dip. And it's and it's and it's simple. It's easy. And it and it and instead of you know standing up with with five pounds of potato chips in your gut, you know later on. You, it's it's something that your body can get nutrition from. Yeah. And and, th- and that's you know that's such a problem is everything's canned, everything's pre-processed, everything's simple for consumption these days and no one's taken into account, "Hey, you're doing this to continue your life, hopefully in a in a in a, a healthy manner." Um, and somewhere along the line, uh, parents didn't hand that down to their children. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, t- to me, like I said, any type of fruit yeah. is great, especially pineapple is a big one for me. No kidding. Oh, yeah. I love pineapple. Like you'll find these trays in the grocery store, pineapple, cantaloupe, honeydew, strawberries, watermelon, and, you know, cherries are great. Gotta love the cherries. And, and you know, and that's one that, that, that so many people just, they, they, they walk right past it. They wouldn't even consider it. Oh, it's got a stem. Oh, there's a seed in the middle. You know what? Take a minute. Enjoy it. It's, it's actually a really great fruit. Pineapple's the same way. You know, if you look at the entire fruit sitting there with all the, all the, uh, the outside on it, you, you think to yourself, that's going to be very difficult to consume. But in three minutes, you can get the skin off, you can get the, the core out. And oh, you're, I got a secret for you. Did oh, you ever okay. try eating the core? I never have. Can you do that? Yes, it is the most uh, delicious part of it. No kidding! It's really thick. It's hard, but you it, it actually tastes great. 
You've got a dense. I never even consider. I just thought everyone takes the core up. You never eat the core of any fruit. You just well, you it. you don't eat the core of the apple, but there's no seeds like there. And like you notice in a pineapple, when you cut the slices, they almost yeah. always have the middle part out. But that middle part is delicious. You are onto something here, my man. There's this. That's a whole market that no one even knew existed. That's fantastic. Yeah, like when you cut up a pineapple, like I said, and you just edge off the skin. Yeah. Like I said, give the core part a chance. It'll take might take you a second to bite into it because it's a little hard, but yeah. not so hard that it'll break your teeth, you know. But it is delicious. Like I had somebody at work saw me eat it, and she goes, "Why are you eating the core?" I was like, yes. "How could I not?" <laughs> It's it's the secret that no one talks. If you know about it, you can't tell anyone else because that, that's where the best stuff is. That's fantastic. Yeah. I didn't. I like I said, I never even would have assumed that it was edible. I I just have always seen people take it out, so I followed suit. Well, yeah. next time you have a pineapple, I'm I'm eating the center. Eat I'm that center. Pineapple. Like give it a shot. If you don't like it, then you know <laughs> you'll have to eat the rest. But. <laughs> But um, I, I'm telling you from experience, I've eaten a lot of pineapple core, and I, I love it just as much as the uh, the outer part of it. Food tips on Python Radio. I love it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, and even like yogurt, like like my brother's girlfriend does not like cherries, but to me, cherry yogurt is great, you know? And, you know, it's perfect. And, and if you throw anything in yogurt, it you, you get whatever the what's going on with the yogurt, but then you get just a, 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 this complex level of flavors going on, and it's it's so fantastic. You can throw you know just a, a bit of granola and some cherries into into a, a cup of yogurt, and there you go. Absolutely. Well, there you go. You it was worthwhile for you to talk to me today. You go try some pineapple with the gore. <laughs> Get out there, folks. Have a, have a pineapple core. Well, it, it is good. I kid you not. I have, and I, but I had, like I said, I had a coworker look at me funny. She would not try it, but I, I kid you not. Uh, the core is really, really good. It is edible, and it, there's something a little sweeter about it. Now, maybe it's just me, but I found it just be a little sweeter. It's it's one of those things. It's you, you take a left hand turn instead of a right one day, and and all of a sudden your life has changed. I'm going to the store after this interview. I'm going to check out what what you're talking about. Well, uh, well, I I hope I haven't steered you wrong, but I I, I, th- <laughs> I think I think I think you'll like it. <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll, I'll send you a review on pineapple cores after we're done here. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll eat any type of fruit or like that, you know. So, yeah. no, I'm not diabetic, but sometimes, you know, like like I know my mom is. Um, I don't know what type she is, but I know she's um, struggled with it. And I don't know um, what you're supposed to eat and what you're not supposed to eat, you know. But um, I I know I like fruit, and uh, like I said, I'm eating a lot more vegetables than I have before. Like I like raw carrots and raw celery. I don't like them cooked, yep. but I like them raw, and I like, like I said, pepper. And it doesn't matter what uh, kind of, what color pepper, but, um, you know, green, orange, red, whatever it yeah, is. Right, right, right. It's all, it's all good to me, you know. You get a little dip with that, and it's great. And the, and the acids and, the, and, and just the nutrients that are in those things, and it's, and it's basic. You don't have to go overboard. You don't need to have, you know, a $20 salad. You, you just, just get some greens into you. Get some kind of, of nutrients other than, you know, uh, whatever's coming out of your, your Stouffer's um, uh, Hot Pocket. Um, no, nothing wrong with Hot Pocket. And if they're out there, I'd, I'd be your ad man anytime you want. But I, I think most of us know that there just aren't all the, the, the basic essentials that you need. Uh, coming from that kind of food. Yeah. Yeah, they always say, you know, people don't like to eat the vegetables, but um, I, I could take it depending on. If I have a cooked stir-fry, is nice. I like a little crunch to it, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Just, just I, you know, it, I, I, they call fruit al dente when it's cooked just just enough to keep the crisp, you know. There you go. Um, and that's, that's that's a good way to live. There you go. Yeah, you should cook that stuff up when you were at Tchotchke's. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the the, uh, the the pizza shooters, the hot wing, or the uh, the extreme fajitas, and uh, oh god, what what else did we have? 
Oh, I don't remember. Is something to do with shrimp? I'm sorry? Something to do with shrimp? That's that's right. That's right. The shrimp. Oh, shrimp poppers. (laughs) There you go. Oh. Oh, it's all coming back. <laughs> well, well, before you did Office Space, like I was looking at your credits and you did a film. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen this previous film, but I, I know the, the director, uh, Bruno Barreto, you was in Carried Away, where you played the young version of Dennis Hopper. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What was that like? You know, just getting to meet Dennis. Um, and again, I was in junior high, so I, I, I didn't know the full body of work he had done. Um but in person, you expect him to be this maniacal, crazy madman, and he's just, he's just the most serene, calm dude you'll ever you'll ever get a chance to meet. Um, a wonderful, wonderful human being, or at least he was, you know, back back when we did that uh, that that production. Yeah, you got a favorite Dennis Hopper movie? Uh, I'm gonna have to say, what was it? Uh, Pink flamingos? Was he? No. That was pink. No, he wasn't pink flamingos. Pink no, flamingos right. come out the year I was born, <laughs> seventy two. Yeah, um, I'm think. Uh, oh, you know what? I I don't know why I'm flipping on the name. He 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 was sucking in the oxygen and getting oh, crazy. Oh, blue velvet. Blue velvet. I knew there was a color to it. Blue velvet. Oh, he was amazing. crazy in that. Amazing character. Just I mean, anybody who dedicates and commits at that level, everyone else around him just. Was, had to had to work in awe that day because he he was obviously just going to steal every scene he was in, you know. And how he never won an Oscar, unreal, yeah. unreal. And he was because, in, a, yeah, he was in Apocalypse Now, and he was in Speed, yeah, and yeah, yeah, he, he did uh, he did um uh, uh oh uh, what was the motorcycle movie back in the seventies? Oh um, yes, Easy Rider. How Easy can I forget Rider. that? Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> The man has a, a, a body of work, the likes of which most people would just, just you know, be be in awe to to, to even have been a, an extra on the set as he was doing this stuff. Yeah, just as long as we can forget that he did meet the Deedles. <laughs> You're gonna have some some, some strange <laughs> swings, you know. I mean, look at look at the weird stuff he did and he got away with it. You know, I'll give him I'll give him a couple of uh, foul balls. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Why not, huh? <laughs> but uh, yeah, carried away like um, um, him, him and uh, oh, who was the other uh, lead guy in that? Who was a madman? Um, it was it was him and, and Gary uh, Oldman. Again, no, uh, the, the blonde headed guy, the crazy head. Uh, uh, oh, no. oh, oh! I know who you're talking about, Gary Busey. Gary Busey, thank you. He there was you. also in it. Okay. So I, Im- imagine, imagine the insurance on the set getting those two guys together. That's 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 an impressive uh, an impressive cast. I don't know if I've been able to hold it together with Amy Irving. You know, I thought she right. was always beautiful. Oh gosh, she's gorgeous, and, Did, and she was married to Bruno at the time. So yeah, I had to envy him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how Spielberg let her go. I. The man was busy. I don't know. He, he he turned around and she was gone. I guess. Did you meet Amy? I I, I got to she, I got to meet Amy and I got to meet uh uh, uh come on we were just talking about him uh, Apocalypse Now. Thank you. Oh Dennis uh, Hopper. Thank you Dennis. I got I got to meet the two of them and I got to meet Bruno. Um, but that that was it. Uh, the the rest of that amazing cast uh, eluded us. It's it's kind of the same way as on uh, office space. I got I got to I got to work with the people at the restaurant, but everyone from the office never got a chance to to meet them until we uh, got together for the reunion. Yeah, no, I probably I probably would have had goosebumps if I met Amy Irving. <laughs> <laughs> She's a looker. Yes, she is. She is. Especially back in the day. Holy cow. Good, good, but talented as well, you know? Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't all about her looks. Yeah, well, I like how she kept her hair, too. She she kept, like, the frizzy hair, the curls. She knew how yes. to wear that well. She's, she's a talented lady and, and, she, and, and has a, an amazing uh, hairstylist, I guess. Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, Office Space is one of these movies. Like, I often, uh, I look at a lot of people going to the movies these days, and I'm like, too many people behave like sheep. 
and I'll give you an example. Office Space is one example here. Um, I remember it, before Office Space came out, there's a movie came out called The Big Lebowski. Yes. I love that movie. One of my favorite movies of all time, right there. Yes, I love that movie. And I remember when it came out, there was very little advertising for it. I think yeah. the only thing they, they were using to promote it was that it was from the directors of Fargo. And Fargo wasn't even promoted well until it was up for Oscars. Right. Yeah. But um, Big Lebowski came out and uh, wasn't there very long. But yet, you know, the top grossing films of 1988, 1998, excuse me, was garbage like Armageddon and The Water Boy <laughs> and basic shit. But it's weird how Armageddon is looked at as the Razzie winning piece of trash that it was. And The Big Lebowski, I mean, there's just this big phenomenon around that now. I, I, there was something going on back then, I, and, and I think we were all still blind to it. I don't think people really understood that they, they had a say in, in what they could and couldn't see. And it, but then it, it, it rose up from films like that. It, it, you know, yeah, go ahead and give the awards to whatever you're going to give and, and do all the advertising to what you're going to do. We're going to go ahead and watch the great films. You know? And I think that's how The Big Lebowski found its feet. It was in after, after theater uh, – Rental sales, uh, rental uh, uh, fees, and and the same thing for uh, office office space. space. It, it it died in the theaters. Well, you know what? I saw Big Lebowski in theaters. I in fact I've seen that twice. Once in a midnight that. screening. Well, I saw Office Space in theaters too when it originally came out, and I was drawn to that poster of all the post-it notes on. <laughs> yes. yes. You know, I I. I knew nothing about it, and I was like, usually that's a draw for me. When I know nothing about something, I'm usually more curious than something that's all over uh, uh, McDonald's um, pop cups, you know? Right. Yeah. So um, I went and saw Office Space when it comes out, and I had, like, 1999, that was a great year for movies. I think I got more movies on Blu-ray from that year than any other year. <laughs> and I've got Office Space, and I loved it. I saw that in the theater, and I laughed so hard at that movie. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, it's, it's, I think it was because it just spoke to people in that time. It was, it was, a, it was a niche idea that no one had really tapped into uh at, at at the level that mike judge could could take it there you know he he understood the mentality of of the people that work those jobs and he just brought it to life in that script and and not to take away from the talent the talent just owned their roles everybody stepped up and just committed to what they were doing it was great yes and you played brian now how <laughs> did you get the role of brian uh, uh, dumb luck, dumb luck. I, I, I live out in Los Angeles now, but I was living in Dallas, Texas at the time, and they shot office space in Austin, just outside of Austin, uh, and then around Dallas as well. Um, and I was just, I, I've actually met a couple of actors who auditioned for the role of Brian out in Los Angeles since I've been here, and uh, it, it was because I was a local hire. It was cheaper than to ship somebody else in because they, they actually had a budget that they had to meet for that film. Um, and it was, it, I, I was lucky enough to, to say, hey, I'll do it, and I'll, I'll drive down to Austin and, and shoot it there for you. Um, at the time, I was actually a puppeteer on the kids' show Barney and Friends, and it was, it was during the week that we were shooting, and... Uh, my agent called and said, hey, can you, can you get down to Austin? There's a movie audition. I said, you know, I'm, I'm shooting the, the Barney thing. And she said, yeah, yeah, but this, this is a movie. Like, this is, this is Hollywood coming to us. This is good. And I said, I, you, you talk to production. I'll, I'll pack my bags and head to Austin. And I went down, and it, it just so happened that six months, eight months prior to the office space audition, I had been fired from a Bennigan's. Um, so I, I had all of the flair and I had the shirt and I had the, the apron. So I just walked in looking the part and immediately, you know, kind of won them over just with the wardrobe alone. Um, and then I guess I was lucky enough to, to put on a good performance as well. So, yeah, it, it, but you had this, um, uh, very uplifted, very phony, but very uplifting yes. disposition where you're always smiling and they, they watch you there out uh, there in the background there. And 
It, and, and, you know, it, the, the funny part was, it was I was it, this was all in jest. The audition itself, I, I was making fun of the character because I had been working that, you know, so I knew the character. And I was just kind of poking fun at it. And I guess I guess they liked that. I guess they like they like the fact that I, I would dedicate or commit so hard to, to making fun of a character that that everybody was going to wind up hating themselves. Uh, some of the best compliments I've ever had are, you were that guy. I hated that guy so much. Great job. You know, and it's like, I, there's a compliment in there. I know that. But uh, uh, well, You know what's interesting, though, is that he, Brian is so phony when he's putting on these little performances. But you see the true colors come out when he's out in the parking lot at night. Yeah. And, you know, and he goes, get a room, you do. And he gives a finger, you know, and that is the side of Brian. The customers aren't seeing. Exactly. That's who exactly. Brian really is. Right. He's he, the, the energy is still there. It just goes to a negative place, a very dark place. <laughs> Did you have butterflies working with Jennifer Aniston? You know, and here's the thing. I, I didn't know I was actually getting to, I, I had heard she was a part of, uh, the the cast, but I didn't I didn't you know the, the rest of the actors, while while big names, they they weren't as you know uh, celebrity wise uh, uh, recognizable as she had been, and so to to walk on set and see her dressed like I'm dressed, and I'm thinking to myself, well we're gonna have to uh, you know work together somehow, and then Mike introduced me says yeah she's gonna be this character. I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing! And and to be honest with you, w one of the most delightful people you'll ever work with, like just a, a, a kind-hearted, warm, loving lady. Um, I actually, we we were we were shooting and it, we were going to wrap for the day, and I said, hey, let's all go out and get a beer. Let's let's celebrate this awesome thing that we're all in a movie. This is this is great. And I I got around to asking her out, and she said. Oh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, not today. I'm sorry. I said, no, that's, hey, what, whatever. And I, I just assumed, you know, hey, she's really busy. Um, but we went out, and uh, Ron Livingston explained it to me. He said, at that time, she had just, I mean, friends had just started blowing up. And at that time, she was also dating Brad Pitt. And he, he, he told me, he says, she can't really go out. Like, the paparazzi would follow her. And if she's out with cast and crew drinking beers while Brad's, you know, not here, it's going to look weird. And so she has to actually put on this persona. And I, I told, I remember telling myself at that time, I thought, I, I like working and I hope I continue to work as an actor, but I never want to be so famous that I can't go out and have a beer with a cast and crew. You know what's interesting? You're my 38th interview. Um, I started do like I've been here at the station since 2005, and I've been wow. reviewing movies since 1996. So I've been doing this wow. a while. Yeah. But um, my first interview was in April of 2015. It was with Tommy Wiseau of The Room. I just heard, uh, was listening to that online. Yeah. 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 Now, now they ditched my. Um, <laughs> A very, very. I didn't have a good experience with my guest host, so, I, yeah, I won't get into that. But, <laughs> yeah, no, but um, no, I, we got him through um, Riff Tracks, and uh, okay. and um, after that, it was like you know, who else can I? Who else can I talk to? And I remember at the time, I just I, I went back and I was like. I like. I wanted to interview a lot of women that I had a thing for growing up, <laughs> and I remember I reached out to a few people. I remember I reached out to Adrian King from Friday the Thirteenth, and because oh. I had a thing for her growing up in that movie. Yeah. And when I messaged her, I could not believe for the life of me when I got a response. It, you know, it's and it's. It, it, I I think I think actors enjoy talking about what they've done and just talking in general it's it's i mean this is what our job is we we, we talk we get paid to talk but but to be able to do it on in in such a uh, an inviting and warm and casual uh arena such as you've you've got going on here it's it's really nice you know it's not it's not uh paparazzi it's not network it's not it's not someone who's who has to put on a persona that's bigger than yours just to compete with you so that they can get ratings themselves for their own show. It's, it's, 
it's it's about the craft. It's about talking about the craft, and that's 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 really reassuring for actors, I think. And I found though too, like uh, like everybody I've interviewed, like uh, I've interviewed people that's done some notable stuff, but yeah. you don't you don't have to go after a listers to get yeah. interesting people. And besides, a <laughs> listers, they're being interviewed all the time. Yeah. Yeah, and so they, they've got the story. You know, it's the, I'm going to tell this story, and we're going to keep it this quick, and it's got to fill 20 seconds of time, and then we'll hit the next question, you know? Because they, they, it just becomes rote memory of, you know, what it is they're supposed to say so they can get out and go do the exact same interview with somebody else. And it just, it stinks. It's, they, they're, not, they're not allowed to be people anymore. And the interviewers, for the most part, you know, and, and I'll give I'll give your 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 A list, your Jimmy Fallon's and your Kimmel's and and and, and that group. I'll give them some leeway because they have to entertain. Uh, but for the most part, you're competing with egos. You know, it's it's hey, let's keep this as entertaining as we possibly can. Let's not get too weird. It's like no, but weird is where it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> weird is weird is what life is. Uh, you you've listened to some of my interviews, have you? I have. Well, I, like I said, I wanted to do my homework to make sure that this is a legit show, so I, I had to had to check in. How, I, I, I'm, I'm my own worst critic. Now, how do, how do I rank with you? <laughs> uh, be honest. I, here's, here's what's great, is you let the people talk. And you, you've got to, and, 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 and I hope this isn't too much kudos, or if you don't like the guy, then I'm sorry, you, you know, I hope you don't take offense to it. But you, you remind me of uh, a more casual Charlie Rose. Okay, um, you, all right. You, you, ask, you, ask, you ask questions that allow your, your hosts or your, your guests to, uh, to open up to you, but then you pay attention to what they say, and you go back and, and you talk about that, and, and that's... That's I, I like that. I like I like how you you round it out. You make you give them the opportunity to be more than you know. And, and I know that you're about the the cult uh, the cult world. Um, and 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 you've got a lot of interviews with people from cult films, whether it be horror or comedy or or, or wherever. Um, but you allow them to be more than just a role from the film that they were a part of. And yeah. That's, you know that's nice. Yeah, just out of curiosity, which ones of my interviews have you listened to? I uh, there was a I, I, I listened to two. I listened to the to the gentleman from the room, and, <laughs> and and I'll be honest with you, that was that was difficult. He was a difficult guest. <laughs> he kept he kept going. Okay, next question. Exactly. It's like he was running the show. It's like no, no, no. I mean, we need you to talk. So you know, don't don't cut yourself off. What's what's going on here? And he didn't like silences at all. That made him very, he was a very jumpy, uh, very jumpy guest. But well, it was him, and then there was a, uh, a blonde-headed lady who was in a horror film. Um, and I, I remember her pictures kept popping up, but I don't, oh, I, I'm horrible with names. My apologies. Was it one um, of the Friday the 13th? I, it, it, I'm thinking it was. Either that or one, one of the chainsaws. I haven't no. got anybody from the Chainsaw, but I'm working on one of them. I am working on trying to get one of the Texas Chainsaw okay. Massacre okay. girls. But I, I, then it might have been it might have been your your starlet from uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Well, I've had Adrian King on from Part One, and I've had Melanie Kinneman on from Part Five. Melanie Kinneman, that was the one I, I heard. Yes, she was awesome. Right? Oh, exactly. she she sent me birthday wishes too. Oh, that's wonderful. What a what a what a great lady! She uh, can do the trooper. She just kept talking. It was great. Yeah, well, I'll t I'll tell you. Um, I am forty four years old, <laughs> and I've never had a girlfriend in my life. What I've, is going on, Bye -bye. Yeah, well, you know what's going on. There's a lot of. Uh, I noticed this. I noticed, and this bugged me about Rihanna. She gets beat up by Chris Brown, and then she shows up in court blowing kisses at him. And it almost seems to me, and I've seen this even around here, girls like to date guys who are pretty much douchebags. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I, I, I am loath to say this in public, but I, I guess everybody needs to, needs to either A, do it themselves, or, or B, know about people who are doing it. And being that I'm, I'm the guy who was the guy from the movie and the television show, I'll, I'll say it. I, I just started uh, therapy. And I'll be honest with you, 
I am blown away at the things that I, as a, as a human being, forget being an actor, you know, who, who's needy and obsessive and, 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 and uh, codependent and all that. Just as a person, it's amazing what you carry around with you and, and the stuff that you just don't need and the stuff that you picked up from your parents or you picked up from, from some bully in the third grade that somehow you just never let go. And it, it, if, if people allow themselves to, to understand why they do what they do, I, I, I think we would have a much better discourse globally and, 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 and especially in the United States because I don't know what it is about uh, – us guys down north of Canada, I don't, I don't know how you, 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 you guys up north handle it, but down here, we, we just repress everything. No one talks about a darn thing down here. Dr. Phil is, a, is, is barely breaching the surface of, of what human beings need to be able to do to, to, to deal with the problems that they carry around with them on a daily basis. It's just ridiculous. Well, the reason I bring this up is because Melanie Kinnaman, um, I'm sorry. Paid a major compliment to me. Oh, good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you the, a story here. I had a girl I had a crush on, and okay. she was doing one of the cabaret shows downtown. Yeah. And she was supposed to come on my show to do a yeah. live interview with me, and she wouldn't come on because I guess she was dating every other guy out there, but <laughs> be, because I was too easy, she wouldn't come on my show. What? She wouldn't come on my show. What, you, you didn't play hard to, enough to get? What, yeah. What does it mean? And I'm sitting um, here thinking now. I, I, I posted a, a picture on my Facebook of, of me. Um, it's a black and white photo. And I couldn't believe it. I'm, there was a, a comment underneath it from Melanie Kinnaman. And it said one word. It just said, hot. And, wow. and I'm looking at this cabaret dancer and I'm saying, you know what? You will never get on my show. I said, I had this gorgeous blonde heroine from Friday the 13th, part five, who yes. looks better at her age now than this cabaret dancer looks now. Yes. Yes. And I'm like, you know what? I look at that cabaret dancer. I said, you will never get on my show. I yes. said, I had this gorgeous, gorgeous blonde heroine. Yes tell me I was hot. And I don't think I'm hot, but I'll take that from her. What exactly, you know? Yeah. For you, and, and way to handle it with, with aplomb and decency. Good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed doing the interview with Melanie Kinnaman, and uh, and um, like, like I said, I, I've done quite a few of these, and I've had a lot of fun with them, and I well, really... What, what, what have been your favorites, though? Like, what, what, uh, of, of all, the, of all the, the, the amazing characters that you've had a chance to sit down with, did, were, there, were there moments or, or, or just in total the entire interview or just like, man, this is, this is, I can't believe I'm doing this? Well, one of the problems I had with my ex-co-host is he kept wanting to get, like, he's only been with, he was only with me for two years. Okay. And we ran into some altercations that I'm not going to get into live here. Right. So uh, we're... Basically, I had to drop him, okay. but um, he kept trying to get interviews with people that uh, I did not know, and I mean, it's called Python's Paradise. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. And so I know, I know, there's a couple of interviews that I let him lead, but uh, because he knew more about the people. But I mean, it it, uh, it got to the point where it was like, you know, can 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 I just do my show? And uh, it got, runs a little deeper than this. It got ugly and, uh, ah. you know, stuff like that. But but I'll, I'll say I've liked everybody I've had on here. Um, it was interesting getting um, – I noticed, too, if somebody has been has passed away, if I can get somebody to come on who knew them to do a tribute. Like Zoe Tamerlis Lund from the movie Miss 45, she, she's gone, you know. She died in 1999, unfortunately, of drugs. But to have her husband come on twice and do an interview and uh, oh. the stuff I found out about her and um, I'm still in touch with him. And, uh, oh, that's sweet. And I had somebody from the Ray Harryhausen uh, Foundation come on who uh, worked with Ray Harryhausen and I, I, I love Clash of the Titans, you know, hated the remake, yeah. but loved the original and he came on and... Uh, uh, we chatted about Ray Harryhausen, and I just had Alfred Hitchcock's granddaughter come on and talk about yeah. Alfred Hitchcock. I mean, what an interesting, 
Yeah. To get that perspective, you know, somebody who isn't actually in the limelight and just was a, a relative of greatness. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, and then I noticed too, you know, uh, um, like I can get um, interesting people from various movies, you know, and yeah. it started with yeah. Tommy Wiseau, and it uh, and it's expanded into what it is now. And I know I got some people. I've been working on. I don't understand people like uh, I know it's on Facebook. You'll get check marks by uh, messages and no response. And I'm like, yeah, I don't understand. It. If I don't want to do the interview, just say they're not interested. That's and that's I, simple. Yeah, and that's happened a few times. And I I know I'm working with trying to get a young. Uh, well, I shouldn't say young, but she was young at the time. A uh, lady from National Lampoon's Animal House, and I can't Aww. seem to get her to respond now. And she responded favorably twice early in the year, and I gave her a little time, and then I tried to get back. And I'm like, Gee, like, how long do I go? Like, I don't want to harass somebody to do an interview, but at the same token, right. I need people to communicate with me. Like when somebody will say, um, like, uh, not right now, but get in touch with me, such and such. Like the woman from Texas Chainsaw said yeah. she's doing a convention uh, in August. She said, uh, reach out to me then. I'm like, okay, that gives me something to go on, you know? Sure, sure. Then you got a timeline. Welcome to Hollywood, my friend. That's that's just the mentality. It's it's they they hope that you can read their mind. I guess I I don't I don't know why silence has become the new uh, uh, way to, to say yes or no. I, I mean, silence, silence is nothing. You, you get, you get nothing from silence. And I'm, I'm, up, I'm amazed at how much silence I get even in my own career. You know, um, you, you're up for a role and then you just don't hear anything. And then you call your agent and your agent says, Oh yeah, they passed. And you're thinking to yourself, but all they had to do was tell you that. You know, that, that, how, how hard is that? Well, one person I'm waiting for now is Greg Stestero, who was, of course, in the movie The Room, and he wrote the book The Disaster Artist. Right. Which is supposed to be made into a film with James Franco playing Tommy later on this year. I- I heard you talking about that in the interview, yeah. Yeah, and I got hold of Greg Sestero on Facebook, and he put me in touch with his agent. And I thought he was supposed to do a book signing in Canada somewhere, I think Vancouver, to celebrate the 13th anniversary of the book. And I'm still waiting for, like I was told, you know, we got to wait till the schedule's clear, blah, 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 blah. But I'm like, it's hard when you're not (laughs) hearing from people. It, it, unlike the, the the message at the beginning of most movies, silence is not golden. You you need to you need to communicate. You get no communication out of not hearing anything. So. And I, another I, thing too, I noticed too, like I'm not I'm not exploiting anybody. You know, like right. Yeah, like, like give me a chance. Like exactly. It's, like uh, I'm not I'm 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 not going to dig into somebody's personal life. I don't care who's sleeping with who. Right. Or or whatnot. It, no. I I don't care about that. Those are not the questions you're gonna be you're gonna be focused on. Yeah, and like I mean, I reached out to Nancy Allen because I wanted to do talk about Dress to Kill and some of the movies she was. In. I got a yeah. message back from her, noting that Dress to Kill was coming out on Criterion Blu-ray, and I'm like, great. Well, well, you want to talk about it? Can we have a conversation about that? Uh, like, oh. But I'm going to tell you, I have one really rude encounter, and um, I won't say who this person was because I don't want to blast her on here, but she's an Italian actress, uh-huh. and um, I reached out to her at the end of, uh, end of last year on Twitter, and she started following me so she could hear what I wanted, and I told her what I wanted, and, and I know she said she, I know she was married to an Italian director. They're now divorced, but she did seven movies with this guy. Wow. And um, he had done some phenomenal uh, work in Italian horror. But anyway, I'm, I, I, um, she li- said she liked what I was doing. She told me to reach out to her in February. Mm-hmm. So February comes, I reach out to her, and she says she doesn't really want to talk about films that she's talked about a hundred times, but she said, you know, uh, contact her in May. So May, I contact her, and I get this response on Twitter, and it was such a slap in the face. She goes, she said she found me, I'm trying to think of the words, um, something, something, and intelligence, but not enough for me. 
Wow. Wow. And I can't think of the other words she was using. Um, I can't. I don't have it right in front of me. And I sat here and I looked at her and I said, number one, these are the films people want to hear about. And number two, um, why is she blasting me? Like, what did I do to her? And I said, why leave me? Like, why not say this back in December? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I said to her, I said, look, you know, I, I found your comments insulting. I, I said that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to promote your work. I said, uh, we live in a day of Netflix. Yep. yep. I, I said, I could be a benefit here. I'm not being right. paid. And I'm a volunteer right. here, you know? And exactly. I'm, exactly. And um, Crazy. I went Crazy. back. Yeah, I went back and forth on her. And uh, at the end of it, I kind of made a little piece, and I asked her if y'all could, I, I could at least get an autographed picture. But then she said, sure, but... Stop and thinking about it. I don't want her autograph anymore because I'm <laughs> here. I'm going to reverse psychology. She doesn't have the right. She she does not have the right to sign an autograph to me. There you go. Yeah, you go. I, I tried to do her good, and I I just found. And here's the sad thing: I don't want to buy any of those movies on Blu-ray because every time I see her, I'm going to remember how rude she was. Yeah. yeah. And um. You know, I, I, um, she told me, you know, reach out to her in a couple of years, but I'm like, really? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm, I admired her as an, an Italian actress. I thought she was great in the films, but I, I didn't like how she handled me. Well, and I, I'm, not, I'm not speaking to her, but I will speak to Jennifer Aniston, who we, we just talked about. Um, she just put out a post on uh, Huffington Post, and it... It spoke volumes uh, to to what it is that you're talking about, and and unfortunately you're in a, a quandary because yes, you're an interviewer, but you're a, a specific interviewer. You speak about things that that are interesting to both the actor and and the industry, you know, and, and you're asking pertinent questions. Unfortunately, uh, this this post that she put up on Huffington Post uh, was saying that all people want to know about is is she pregnant. And the paparazzi sit outside of her house, and they and they attack her and her husband on a daily basis, and they want to put pictures up saying, "Oh, she's gained five pounds. Maybe she's getting fat because she doesn't care anymore. Oh, maybe maybe it's a baby," and and it's not about her anymore. It's about them, and you unfortunately are a part of that industry, and and it's unfortunate because you you actually do decency. And, and due diligence uh, to your position, and you know what it is that you're doing, and, and you bring a good game. But it's, it, the, these, these actresses have been hit and accosted and bombarded with so much negativity from their own industry. It's difficult. And may, maybe, maybe the woman you're talking about is an asshole herself. I don't, I don't know. Um, but but if, if she had a reason for doing it, it might be because of the way she was treated so many other times that could be it you know and uh but i don't know maybe in a couple of years i might feel better about it but i don't right. know but no but... no and she did she struck you in, in in a negative way and i i, I entirely understand your position um you're, you're trying to do your job and your job is 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 a good job uh because you haven't taken it to that tmz level you 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 actually are a, a decent uh a uh, host for your own show, and, and you you want people to listen. You want people to get something out of what it is you're doing, other than you know the the trash and the smut that that uh, that that could befall the the paparazzi. Yeah, I I, I hate the I I hate that I hate these gossip magazines. Yeah, it's just garbage. Well, and and unfortunately, they make a lot of money doing. They they work hard. They work hard to sell smut. And it just it I, I don't I don't I, I want to know who the body of people out there is who who read this stuff and take it in and 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 let it affect them because there's so much negativity to it you know yeah but um, no I mean as far as Jennifer Aniston goes. Um, the first time I really took her seriously, like I did not care for a lot of her early romantic comedies, but the first right. time I really took her seriously was Office Space. 
I thought she was so great in it. <laughs> she stepped she stepped up. She did a good job. I mean, Man. she's not really um she does she's not really a team player after all. She's only got seven what is it? 17 pieces of flair. She's not a team player, but she certainly knows how to express herself with sign language. <laughs> Touche. And look at Mike Judge and that pathetic wiki. Oh, oh, he was he he's the most fun. If 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 I if I could I I've read about Alfred Hitchcock and how much fun he, he was as a director, but Mike Mike is at that level of just he, he keeps it as fun as he can on a set. And that was his first big budget thing that wasn't Beavis and Butthead. Um so he was he was kind of a uh, an unknown quantity uh, in terms of can he, can he pull off a, a live action movie? Um, and he just allowed us to be as free and wonderful as we possibly could be. Back then, I hadn't even taken improv class. And I got to the set and he said, listen, here are the lines, but you're more the character than the lines are. So if you can come up with anything you want, go for it. And I swear, we there's a day and a half for, full of uh, just ad libs that are on the edit room floor somewhere. Um, and I'm sure he allowed that with every actor on that set because it was such an amazing body of comedic uh, talent. And, and, and it would be great at some point if, if 20th Century Fox or if Mike Judge himself held on to the, the outtakes just to see what, what went on uh, that didn't make the movie. You know, it's interesting, too. Um, a lot of people are saying, we want a sequel to Office Space. We want a sequel to Office Space. And Mike Judge gave the world a movie called Extract. And exactly. I loved it. It was great. Yes, it was brilliant. It was great. And it didn't do well. It's like yeah. like, like, it's like uh, Mike Judge is going to be like, give me a break, folks. Yep. And then, and then, he, and then he turned around and did Idiocracy, which... I'm going to give him a, a claim on as well. It, 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 it was interesting, if nothing else, and, and rather uh, prophetic. It, the world kind of went in that direction. Yeah, but one of the things I like about his writing style, and I'm going to say this uh, right now in a scene I remembered in Extract. I like, you know how many movies, like I, I thought, for example, um, Movies like Bounce with Ben Affleck, and uh, there was that one Zac Afron uh, was in there where uh, the, the romance where somebody died and he has to go and he meets mm. this woman and he doesn't right. tell her, you know. And it, it was just a shitty movie. I forget yes. what it was called. It was or the, the last something or whatever. I don't know. It was stupid. But <laughs> they they go through the whole movie, and, and I'm sitting there thinking, man, just – Open up and tell them you've done nothing wrong. Tell them that unfortunately your brother's gone. But hey, you know, I saw this photo and it ended up saving my life. You know, and 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 blah blah blah. And, the, and it goes through this whole predictable, stupid formula, where of course she's going to find out and blow up at him, and they're going to end up getting back together. And I'm just sitting there shaking my head. One of the things I loved in extract. And you've seen Extract, right? Yes. Okay. I, I think it was great during the scene when um, Jason Bateman sees Mila Kunis go into the apartment across the way, and he goes and he confronts her. He sees the purse with the teddy and the tutu, and he actually calls her out. Wow. I like wow. the fact he doesn't yeah. beat around the bush. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, I like that, and I think Mike Judge is very, very brilliant because he doesn't take these stupid shortcuts that they they do through some of these really idiotic, um, especially romance movies, where it's like, well, I better not own up to this because, you know, she won't like me, blah, blah, blah. And they go the whole movie, and you just throw your hands up. It's like, this is junk. <laughs> no offense to Zac Efron. Like, he's improved. But whatever that movie was he did with Taylor Shrill Shrilling, that, that was garbage. Yeah. Yeah. But Sometimes you need to make rent, I guess. I, I guess. But Jennifer <laughs> Aniston, though, like, she went from uh, office space, and she did Horrible Bosses, and she was great in that. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, and, 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 that 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 the director and 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 the, the production company would allow such a a, a, 
an interesting change because everybody, no, nobody sees her in that kind of role. Like that's, that's just, that's, that's counterintuitive to the, to the characters that everybody knows her to play. And yet she just nailed it. Like she, she took it and made it her own. It was beautiful. Yeah, and um, like like I said, it, it's where I really started taking Jennifer Aniston seriously, yeah. because I mean, nothing against romantic comedies, but there comes to a point they're paint by numbers. Yeah, yeah, you know. But uh, you well, like, and she's done she's done her share of them. I think she's got two of them or, or something out there. But that's that's you, you got to have the full oof of 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 uh, of, of a person's. Uh, uh, talent and abilities and sometimes you got you got to go do those those schmaltzy things but she she's she's capable of doing that and then turning around and doing amazing work so. exactly and i'm very impressed with what i've seen of her and uh, yeah. yeah like I, I think she's i got a lot more respect for her after seeing her in movies like this like uh, like i said office space like i, I was yeah. like wow this this is what i like to see out of her you know yeah yeah, Office Space was good. Uh, the Good Girl was it? The Good Girl that she did. The Good Girl, um, yes, yeah. Yep. I, I, and and again, not not comedic, but but very interesting for her um, to be able to pull that off. Exactly. There's other interesting people in Office Space. Like I like Ron Livingston. He played that average everyday guy. There was nothing yep. Brad Pitt about him. He's no. somebody you can relate to. And uh, yep. Yeah. But speaking of him, did you fill out your TPS reports today? <laughs> I took a baseball bet to my TPS reports. <laughs> did you see that in Family Guy when they did that? Yes. <laughs> oh, I, you know, if I could get in with that group of guys, I would be uh, a pig in mud. That's those, the, the stuff that they get to just make fun of, I love it. Showed nothing Stewie is, and Brian nothing, take the thing out with the exactly. baseball. <laughs> nothing is sacred for that that crew. I love it. Yeah, but uh, Ron Livingston, I I thought he, he you could just totally relate to his character. Yeah, and yep. and everybody in the theater laughed and applauded when he Aww. looks at his phone and presses the off button yeah. and goes back to bed. Walks away. <laughs> His girlfriend shouting on him on the phone, and when he's being hypnotized, he wakes up. He just sitting there smiling. Guys, I had a heart attack. He's just sitting there. All oh, gonna... I wouldn't say I'm missing it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, he was he was terrific, and uh, and there's something very real about him. He looks like somebody you would see on the street somewhere, you know? Yeah, yeah he's not Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, like you said, Brad Pitt. Uh, hunky. He's he's he's, just, just a, he's a good looking normal guy. Yes, and uh, of course, uh, you must have been and you must have been beside yourself being able to work with Jennifer Aniston and Michael Bolton. What Michael was it like working with Bolton. Michael Bolton? Did he sing for you? <laughs> that no talent ass clown. <laughs> What's your favorite Michael Bolton song? <laughs> right? Exactly. Oh, I celebrate his his whole library. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like David Herman. He was so good oh, in that movie. David Herman, Gary Cole, um um what's his name? The, the other Bob. Uh oh, um Oh, John uh, McGinley. John John McGinley. Brilliant talent. Just Amazing! I gotta say, the performance that stood out to me in the movie. I loved Gary Cole as Bill Lumberg. That was my favorite Un character in the movie. Unreal! Between between him and uh, uh, um, Milton, Milton, because <laughs> because I mean, who who has had less lines in a movie and and had more importance and relevance in a film based on the lack of conversation that they put out into the into the movie like the, all he did was mumble that, it, it's brilliant and you know what steven root is such an underrated oh. treasured actor he and he's in he's in everything but he's one of those actors that you never recognize him he's just that good he you just allow him to be himself and you don't you celebrate it because it was so natural and so wonderful that that you didn't have to ask, is this, am I watching acting? What's going on? You just accept him because he, he takes on a character so well. 
he had like one part, like one scene in a movie. Called, and again, another underrated movie that bombed, and I loved it, called The Men Who Stare at Goats. Yes! Great yes. movie! Brilliant movie! Oh, I can't understand. The movie didn't do well. And I'm like, why is it I love these movies and so many people won't go see them? Yeah. yeah. Uh, because for that one, I don't think they knew how to, how to, how to market it. I think the advertising, because it was such a diverse, strange film, and they were just using clips. And but but Brad Pitt and uh, Francis Francis McDormand, oh god, I, that that entire cast, George Clooney, amazing. Well, you know what I found interesting with the men who stare at goats is the yes. fact that you're right in the same position as Ewan McGregor in the movie. Yeah, you're you're yes. looking at George Clooney and you're thinking he's so full of shit, yes. but yet you can't help but Somehow, George Clooney believes so much in what he's saying, you yeah. kind of string along. I like how it just reels you in and puts you in Ewan McGregor's p- spot. Oh, oh, and it's, it, it was, it, it, I think the editing was, was fantastic. I thought the performances were, ah, uh, that was, yeah, yeah. Just and you had Kevin time. Spacey and Jeff Bridges in it. Why that movie didn't do well, I, I never I, get I, it. Th- there are just some that are allowed to get away. Uh, there's one. There's one out right now that that I know it's it's getting a lot of uh, a, a lot of press on it, but but I haven't yet seen it, and it's going to be one of these indie, indie films that I think maybe it'll get up for an award, but nobody because it's such a, an obscure thing, nobody will talk about it. But uh, the Swiss Army Man, I think okay. that's going to be a, a, just an amazing film. Do you want me to tell you what I saw this year? Yeah. Um, Prior to this year, the most I've seen a movie at the theaters is five times. <laughs> this year, I actually saw a movie nine times in theaters. And this oh, movie sorry. we only had for two weeks. Wow. And it was called Everybody Wants Some. Really? I loved it. And I okay. just bought it on Blu-ray this week. It's the spiritual sequel to Dazed and Confused. It was by Richard Linklater. Yeah, I, I, it's the seventies. It's, I mean, it's that's it. I'm, I'm impressed. I'll have to go see it then. Yeah, well, this one's set in the eighties. Oh, what is it? Okay, okay, got it. Like you know how Dazed and Confused is set in the seventies. In the seventies, right? Well, this one's set in August nineteen eighty. That last weekend before you go to class. I love it. And it's got. I, I actually ordered the soundtrack on off Amazon because it's like it just took me back. Uh, I just Facebooked uh, a Juice Newton th- uh, song because I, I hadn't heard her, her music in, seriously, I don't think it's since the early 90s. And somebody drove by blaring it out of their car the other day, and I was just like, yep, need to, need to know more about Juice. Where has she been? I, uh, I loved 80s music. Queen of Hearts. <laughs> Queen, that was it. That yep. was it. <laughs> she was funny, too, if you watch some of her videos. She had a good sense of humor about it. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, everybody wants I went to it nine times. Like, I um, love it. I love it. I, I, I kept going back, and people were looking at me like, why did you go to this movie nine times? And they would not have bat an eye if I had gone to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles nine times. <laughs> but, but you're going to go do uh, a Richard Linkletter film nine times? Really? Okay, great, yeah. Well, I've been trying to get an interview from uh, Everybody Wants Some, and my pitch has been, I've seen this nine times, and boy, getting people to, to actually read my uh, <laughs> my yeah. invitations is difficult, you know, but it's like, but it, again, it's one of those little indie movies that um, I think it's going to gain a cult following. I hope so. I, Linkletter, that's, that's what he does, and he does it so well, because it, he speaks to people that remember what it is that he's talking about. And I just, I just hope that those people haven't been uh, taken into streaming films and, and, and getting everything on their, on their, on their, uh, uh, through cable, through on demand yet, because that, that film does not need to be on demand. That needs to be something in your actual library that you own, you know? Well, I've been saying, I, I still buy movies on Blu-ray, and I still buy CDs. Like I, I'm, I love it. you know, like I, I You're believe old in. School. I'm very, very old school, yeah. you know. But um, 
yeah, I enjoyed that film, and I, I feel sad when movies like that don't do well. But yeah. the same tokens, like with Big Lebowski and Office Space, they seem to find uh, uh, an audience um, somewhere down the line. I got to tell you something with Big Lebowski and Office Space. Yeah, I've got. <sighs> I think I, I I've got more memorabilia home on Big Lebowski than any other <laughs> film, but I, I absolutely <laughs> I've got a couple of boxes. I actually got them into the bookstore in their little memorabilia section, but yes. But the, there was one for Big Lebowski, and there was one for Office Space, and there was some for some other shows and whatnot. The Office yes. Space one was interesting. It had uh, in it you had the little red stapler, right. You had uh, a mug in it with yep. Bill Lumberg in it. Yep, yep. And then you had the jump to conclusion, Matt. The jump to conclusions, Matt. Yeah, <laughs> I had that. You know, um, oh, I'm trying to think what else that thing. Oh, yeah, a bunch of TPS reports. Sure, sure. <laughs> and some pieces of flair. So you could you could sit there and actually play out the movie as the movie was going along. It was it's it's almost a Rocky Horror Picture in a box for you. It's, that's that's delightful. Absolutely. So, um, like, uh, I I bought that, and I bought well, I bought one for my brother as well because he also loves Office Space and Big Lebowski. So yes. we have got this this nice little memorabilia thing there in the house. But uh, great. All the all these great. interesting characters and all their little quirks that Mike Judge just seems to bring out. Like like Bill Lumberg, for example. Like when he goes. Yeah, like we've heard people do it, but I like how they exaggerate it out. Exactly, exactly. And of course, the suspenders like, and like he's he's in a thought, he's in a thought, and it's coming. You got you just got to get through the yeah to hear the horrible news that comes after the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm poor Ron Livingston just sitting there just waiting for it. Oh, oh, trying to get that computer to shut down. Come on, come on. <laughs> And then, Amazing. of course, Diedrich Vader playing Lawrence. Yes. Like, oh, I love that on. that line he gives. You don't need a million dollars to do nothing. Just That's look right. at my cousin. He's broke and don't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I'd do if I had a million dollars. Two girls at one time. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't take no million dollars either. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. But uh, again, you know, very underrated and uh, oh, performing. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. But I tell you, you know, and 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 I, I've worked with Mike. I love Mike. I would work again with him at a drop of a hat. But the, the guys you're talking about, the Cohen brothers, holy cow! Oh, if you, and anyone who gets to work with them, that that must just be a conversation unto itself. You know. Oh yeah, the Coens are great because they just they they go against the norm. They do, and they but they do it with so much decency and tact. They just it's it's there's it's it's amazing how 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 they pull that stuff off. Yeah, um, and of course another guy you worked with too in the restaurant, um, um, a J. Uh, okay. How do you pronounce his name? <laughs> Not gonna, not gonna, not gonna work here anymore. <laughs> oh, and, and he's 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 actually a really good uh, musician and DJ as well. Um, he's he's a he's a multifaceted, uh, talented man. You know what? He's done bits parts in movies, other movies I like sure. too. Like he he was seen briefly in Requiem for a Dream. Yep. And he's yep. seen briefly. <laughs> He uses actually uses the ass clown comment in Bad Santa. It's oh beautiful. It's as uh, I yeah no I you know and, and everybody else smartly figured out a way to to continue working off of that film. And for some reason, my representation at the time, I had an agent uh, in Dallas, Texas, who got me that job. She also got me the Barney. Uh, she also got me on. Uh, uh, Walker, Texas Ranger back in the day. Okay. Um, she, she was the best agent I've had in, in my entire career. Um, but she told me after office space and as my contract was ending on Barney and friends, she said, you know, you need to move to Hollywood. It's never going to be as good here as, as, as how you have just had it. Like you've just had this amazing string of, of awesome and, now you're going to be sitting around doing local theater and, and, and local car commercials for the rest of your life, and you, you probably are going to want more than that, so take off. And, and I left, and I came out to Los Angeles, 
And then she passed away about eight years later. And I tried to send her as many uh, residual checks as I could um, during that time. But it, I, I will say it's, it's, it's been a loss to not have her uh, both as a person and as, as a representative uh, of my, of my, my uh, career because she, she just understood agenting. She was, she was an amazing lady. I feel sad for your loss. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 one of those things. You know, you, you get out to L.A. and you think, well, I've got I've got a, a, a cult movie. Um, I've I've been on Walker Texas Ranger. I'm I'm on a cult t- kids TV show. Like I'm already moving in the right direction. And I hadn't even done Buffy the Vampire Slayer at that point. And I get out here, and no one will talk to me because Office Space was the supposedly the hot thing on my resume. And yet it wasn't hot in the, in the box office, and so they didn't know how to sell it. And I'm sitting there watching all of these people from the movie, from Office Space, getting all of these great offers. And I'm like, how are their agents doing it? And, and my agents and managers can't do anything. And my agents and managers kept getting met with the same thing. Yeah, Office Space, that's a, that's a weird film, isn't it? What's, what's going on with that film? Like, holy cow. Like, and, and yet it was... We were just behind the the ball on the thing, you know. We uh, we 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 just couldn't couldn't get the momentum going at the right time. Wow! And Office Space is such a celebrated movie now. It, I know it is. It, well, you know, but it was one of those things. It was it, I was on I was on the backside of the wave as it crested and as it went over. As Hunter Thompson was uh, prone to saying, you, you got to be on the right side of the wave. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, I, I, I'm a lucky man. I'm very lucky. Like I said, I, I got it. I, I'm not sure if it, it had to do with talent. I'm sure talent was a part of it, but I think it was just because they weren't going to have to spend any more money to get an, an LA talent to, to go to Dallas at the time or, or to Austin. So, uh, I, I, I was filling two, two slots, a financial, a financial slot and somebody who could actually say the lines and, and get away with it. Well, well, you did bring out what the character needed, <laughs> that sense of um, phoniness to, yeah. you know, in the, you know, in the workplace. In the yeah. But uh, like I said, with the, the scene, the late night in the parking lot, you know, that's where Brian shows his true colors. That's what yeah. Brian really is like, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, and, and, and I got, I got, uh, I, I was told later, I got uh, Buffy, uh, the TV show. Um, off of being on, on Office Space uh, because, um, oh, my gosh, why is my brain? I'm, 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 I'm the worst with, with Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon, okay. the director for, uh, and the writer for Buffy, uh, had found out that I had auditioned for this role. And basically the kid who had the role I was, I was filling uh, had just done a movie, and he wanted more face time because the character I was taking on was a fully prosthetic character. Um, and he was like, hey, listen, I need to get FaceTime. I need to be popular. I need to be famous. And casting called me and said, listen, this job is basically yours. Do you mind working in prosthetics? And I'm like, I love prosthetics. Let's, let's do it. And so I auditioned, and they said, you nailed it. Let's, let's get them into prosthetics. And, like, I, like I, I booked the, the gig, and, and three hours later I was sitting in the chair of some of the most amazing uh, uh, makeup artists I've ever worked with, um, and it, it took us sometimes three and a half hours to get into character into makeup, and it definitely took us at least two and a half hours every day at the end of the day uh, to get out. And then you had to sit in it for twelve to fourteen hours. So there were days where you just wake up in 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 the in the makeup chair as they're working on you, and you'd fall asleep in the makeup chair, and that's just the way your day was. Um, but it was it was a fantastic time. I got to do six or eight weeks on that show. I think I did four episodes, and it was it was just brilliant work. You know, we'll we'll get to Buffy in a minute. That you brought up an interesting point working in prosthetics. I I um I thought the X Men movies for the most part were pretty good, but I'm going to tell you I was rather put off by something that happened in X Men Apocalypse this year. And um, I gave it a favorable review, but it, it, but it lost a, a number of points. Oh. And I'm, my favorite X Men is Mystique. I like Mystique. Okay. And, uh, and, and, 
And that was the, the Jennifer. Jennifer was doing that. Yeah, that, Je- Jennifer yeah. Lawrence. And yeah. most of the time she's on screen, you're seeing Jennifer Lawrence. And I'm like, I, I know what's going on here. Right. They're trying to get their star power. And I think Jennifer Lawrence is a mighty fine actress. But sure. she I don't think she played the part as good as what Rebecca Romaine did. Like, Rebecca Romaine played it very sexy, played it yeah. very uh, sadistic. Yes. It, it, and and, and less, less is more, you know? Just don't talk. That, that character does not need to talk. Yeah, and I almost think that they were, like, I, Rebecca Romaine didn't get high billing, but they gave, uh, they gave um, uh, Jennifer Lawrence as high billing, and she, yeah. and she spends most of the time as Jennifer Lawrence, and it took me out of the movie. So when I hear you say about somebody, I want more FaceTime, they're making it, yeah. (laughs) Well, and I mean, God God bless whoever the actor was that that decided to walk away from that role because it gave me an opportunity to work in full-on prosthetics. I mean, like like neck neck to, to, to nape of neck. Um, and, and hands, and they, they had full blackout contacts. I actually had my retina, or my, uh, my oh, what's the, uh, the, 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 the protective coating on the eye. It, I had that ripped out because you're supposed to have black, uh, the, they, they use these uh, hard contacts uh, when they need to do full blackout eye contacts, and uh, apparently they don't let any oxygen in, so they tell you, uh, you know, in under undertones, hey, listen, if it's in there more than 10 hours, let us know so we'll pop them out for you. And I'm like, okay, but that's your job. And, and I, you know, when, when you're on the set, you don't, you're not counting minutes as to when you need to get your contacts out. And so they'd throw these contacts in at 4.30 in the morning and at 5 p.m. when they still haven't gotten to you and you've taken two naps and you've, you've eaten lunch and you, you just forget that you've got these contacts. And, and they popped one out and it took off a part of my eye uh, protected protection. Um, I mean, like, yeah, there, that's a pain unlike anything I'll ever experience. Oh. Um, but but you, you, you do these amazing things, and then you realize that there are some people who say, nah, I, I can't do that. I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to do that stuff. And it's, you know, that, that, that kind, that's kind of, it's disheartening, because as an actor, I want to do it. I want to do it. And, and there are, 18 million other actors in Los Angeles who want to do it, and they'll do it for half half the cost, you know. Um, and, and and at some point, you, you remember this is about the passion of the job. It's not about the the paycheck. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to do great work for very little money. But if you give me the opportunity to work, and and you respect the work that I'm doing, I'm going to go all out for you. There was an awful lot of uh, nice-looking women in uh, Buffy now. <laughs> what was Sarah Michelle Gellar like? Uh, Sarah was gorgeous. She's she's always gorgeous. Um, but she was always, it, and again, I was on that set for six to eight weeks. I it was I I basically lived there due to the prosthetics uh, lifestyle. Um, but while I was there, I got a couple of chances to talk to her. Uh, she's she is a star. She is a starlet. She, at that point, she she understood that she owned that show and she felt uh, a real responsibility to that role. And it was it was it was a real honor to to get to work with somebody, who uh, a female who had to be strong enough to carry a show, uh, because back then that just didn't happen. Um, and then she had Allison Allison Hannigan on her side. Wasn't she um, in band camp? there was just this one time in band camp (laughs) oh come on and and her comedy knew no end like and she couldn't she couldn't help not finding the humor in her lines like i I don't know if they wrote it for her or if she if it was just her comedic timing but she what a brilliant talent she was yeah, and it's funny because you look at her in American Pie, and then you look at her in Buck. She's actually very attractive. She is. She is. And then she goes to um, uh, How I Met My Mother, and and she's brilliant in that show as well. Like, but but still attractive. Like, it. She's 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 talented and attractive, and I don't know how you put both of those things into 
someone, and, and, and it turns out so well. And Charisma Carpenter. Yes, I worked with her. Amazing. <laughs> Did you sweat a lot under that makeup working with these lovelies? <laughs> <laughs> I tried not to. They dabbed a lot. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of talc going on uh, to keep me dry. And then there's Michelle Trachtenberg. Yeah. Oh, oh what, I mean, what a great cast. It's been so long since I've worked with any of them. But, uh, but yeah, no, the, the memories, they are, they are a plenty. I got one story to tell you about uh, Michelle Transenberg. Yeah. You see, we got a ten-screen theater up the hill, and it it um, it was built in um, right at the tail end of 1996. Okay. You know, we went from a four four-screen theater uh, a little bit, a few blocks away, to this ten-screener at the mall in 1996. And uh, I remember the first movie I saw up there during its grand opening. Um, they're doing something where you bring food for the food bank and you can see one of the family films they put on for the matinee. And they, and uh, I went and I saw Harriet the Spy. Yes. And that yes. was Michelle Trachtenberg, so young. And um, I oh. always remember for that because I gave that film my top rating. I thought it was a great family film. And no she's, kidding. Yeah. And she, there you go. She grew into this gorgeous, beautiful woman. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome! That's awesome. And then, you know, of course, Amber Benson was in Bobby as well. Man, they did. They had a good lineup of of uh, amazing female talent on that show. I'm surprised you didn't hook up with any of those girls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I was like you at that point. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm just here for the job. I'm just. I'm I, I'd be standing there like Rodney Dangerfield, constantly adjusting my tie, like. <laughs> Oh, oh, no respect. No respect. Come on. No respect at all. I remember one joke Rodney told. He goes, one time I went to the bookstore. I bought a book, A Thousand Ways to Make Love. I ended up in traction. There was a misprint. <laughs> oh, Dr. Vinny Boombots. Come on. I love it. Yeah. But um, no, uh, Buffy. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, a lot of. A lot of woman they, power in that show. Well, <laughs> I get, I get, power, get. But, you know, they had a good surrounding. I mean, the, the, uh, what's his name? Uh, David Boreanaz as, as, as Angel was fantastic. Uh, the guy who played, um, uh, oh, the blonde-headed uh, British actor, a uh, fabulous actor. Um, he, he, was, he was the uh, kind of the rebel uh, uh, vampire uh, Ah, man, I'm, again, horrible with names, but what are you going to do? Um, but, yeah, he was great. Um, the, 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 the friend of theirs uh, who was on their side, he was, he was, a, he was a, a, a vampire slayer as well, but kind of a nerdy kind of guy. Um, it, 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 it was just a really well-formed cast, and by the time I had got to it, they, they had gelled so completely that it was just – it was just this well-oiled machine. You just slip right into it, and it be, you become a part of it. You did a lot of voice work, too. Like, I noticed that you did a voice in uh, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. I, I, did, a, I did scratch voice for, for SpongeBob, but I was also live action at the very front of the movie. I was, I was actually a PA in the office where they, they did the animation. And uh, the, the producers and directors for the film knew who I was, and they're like, hey, man, we've got a, a no-liner role at the very beginning of the film. You're going to be in it for like a split second. Would you Would you mind? And it was basically background extra. But it, it's SpongeBob SquarePants. Like, yeah, I'm. you, you tell me where to be. I, I'd love to be a part of it. Um, that's that's why I did the PA job. I just, I, I, loved, I loved the show. And so I got into the movie. Uh, a friend of mine was a PA on it, and we were... We were working for him, and, and then all of a sudden I was in the movie. So, very lucky. Isn't it interesting, though, um, Antonio Banderas goes from Zorro to playing the, the, the burger guy in the second one? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that second movie was even better than the first, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, and, and, I'm, and, and not, not to take away from SpongeBob, but Puss in Boots, probably one of the best animated characters. Oh, I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. But, Puss in Boots oh. was great. I used to have uh, own a, um, an orange tabby, so. Yes, 
you know, you know. Oh man, that 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 hairball attack in in uh, the um, the uh, the Dave Myers film, uh, oh, uh, the the ogre film. Come on, uh, Shrek. Shrek. Thank you. Uh, brilliant. Brilliant. Yep. Oh yeah, they did well when they brought in uh, Puss in Boots. Ah oh, man, I I love animation. I think right now my favorite animation is Archer. Um, oh, Archer's that, great! <laughs> oh my gosh, some of the greatest lines ever in that show. I don't know how they get away with it, but I'm 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 floored every time I watch that show. You know what's weird? Um, I, I, here's something I got to bring up. Yeah, it's interesting. You know. Um, People like I, I come from a Christian household. Okay. And um, I got no problem talking about my beliefs, but I can do it without pushing it on people. But I hate it when you got these people out there with an agenda and they will attack, you know, like your archers and or your violent movies and yeah. this and that. And uh, I. I think archers funny. I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't be <laughs> laughing at it, but I do. <laughs> You got to stand up for what's right sometimes, you know, <laughs> regardless of the background. You also, of course, worked on Barney. I worked on Barney. I worked. I, I did a. I did a small cult horror film called Hollywood Kills with with an amazing cast. Uh, okay. Dominic Keating was in it. Um, uh, God, who he he was from? Uh, he was from. Um, uh, one of the, one of the one of the Star Trek shows. Uh, Zach Ward was also in it. I um, just interviewed Zach Ward. Oh, did you really? There you go. I just I, had I, him on here in um, uh, June ninth. Uh, we were oh, talking about the movie Postal. What a what a, an amazing talent he is. The man the man he just keeps popping up. He does amazing work, and he's you're always going to recognize him as the the bully from the Christmas story. Yeah, he, I'm going to have him on again, um, probably next year, because he he directed a film called Restoration, and I I hadn't seen it yet. So whenever I see it, there you go. Yeah, you got, you got a reason. Oh, what a what a what a wonderful man! And 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 getting to work with him, fantastic, fantastic opportunity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But when you did Barney, you know, I mean, I know Selena Gomez was involved in that show. Do you ever like take Barney and make her make him go all T-Rex on uh on, <laughs> on Selena? Okay, I'm going to give you a story and and I, I unfortunately cannot avow or disavow that it ever happened. You're just going to have to believe it happened because I have I have asked the production company for it. When people ask for it and they, they refuse, they say it never existed. It, it didn't happen. It just is pushed under the carpet. I was there. Um, they, they were shooting the Barney movie. And so the actual voice of Barney and the actual guy who was in the Barney costume, a giant black Baptist minister at the time, were off in Hollywood or wherever they were shooting the movie. Okay. And so they brought in a touring Barney voice and a touring Barney uh, outfit actor. And... It was. It, we had gone through rehearsals. Uh, we 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 knew everything we needed to do. It was the, it was one of the first shots of the actual shooting day, and we're we're all you know the cameras are getting their shot points. The lights are warming up on the on the set. People are getting their coffee. No one's really paying attention. The music is playing. The the, the choreographer is is making sure the kids are doing their steps on time, and the guy inside the Barney outfit is doing his thing properly. And all of a sudden. Throughout the music, you hear some muffled, get me the fuck out, I'm on fire, oh fuck, fuck shit, I'm on fire, oh my god, oh my god. Turns out, the guy inside the Barney outfit, there, there's a cooling system in the Barney costume. It's a giant fan-based cooling unit thing. But two electrical wires had frayed and started rubbing on each other and caused a fire inside the outfit. Now, the the Barney outfit comes down over your head, and it's Velcroed in at the crotch. And Barney had the giant velvet mitten-type hands, so he couldn't, he couldn't get out. But here is a giant smiling dino in the middle of dancing, happy, gleeful children who are singing along to music, swinging his tail left and right, dropping cast members and props and, 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 and the entire set like it's like they're dominoes, like a giant Godzilla <laughs> on a set, 
with smoke billowing out of his mouth, screaming, get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> fuck, fuck, I'm on fire. Oh, shit, get me out. And he can't get out, and so he's grabbing his crotch, trying to get himself out. And, and finally, one of, the, one of the cameramen dropped the costume, ripped the Velcro crotch out, and got the guy out. And he had, like, third-degree lung burns. But that day actually happened. And I was there to see it. Now, I don't know if Selena was there on that day, but I'm sure she's got her own stories. <laughs> you know what that put me in mind of? Yeah. The scene from Bad Santa where uh, he shows up drunk and he's like falling over on the, the pl- uh, plastic donkey he punches. Yes. It's, it's those moments. Those come from, from real moments. Like, like writers don't just write that. Like you have to live that stuff. That's that's real. That just awesome. sounds like something that'd be on a comedy. <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. Only I don't I mean, how do you get the rights for Barney? Who would who would say yes after so much PG and G rated uh, television viewing to go for an R N C seventeen rating? I I don't know. I don't know. It's it's kind of a death to smoochies type moment. Holy cow. I can just picture Bernie grabbing his crotch. <laughs> going, oh, F this, F that. <laughs> I just, I, you know, it's, it's those things. It's like, don't, I, I get it. I'm not paid well. I'm, 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 I, I don't work a lot when I do work. But when I get those opportunities to have those experiences, that's what acting is about for me. You know, is just enjoying the, the the opportunity to be a part of things like that. Oh wow! Yeah, holy cow! <laughs> do, do you? I'm just wondering. Do you, do you do you know where I'm located up here in Fredericton, New Brunswick? Do you know where I am? I I don't. I, that's I. This is my own American negligence. I Americans don't know geography at all. So I I hear New Brunswick and I think Northeast, but I'm I'm sure that's I'm sure you're probably on the West Coast. Okay. Um, I'd say the closest thing we have to celebrities here, and they're about six hours of, away. Have you heard of the Trailer Park Boys? Yes! Oh, love those guys! There you go. Well, okay. the, the Halifax uh, is where they're based, and they're about six hours away from us. Strangely enough, I'm having a struggle getting, one, getting them, those guys to come on my podcast. How is that even possible? They are you. You are them. Like, I've had somebody from UK call and talk to me about Ray Harryhausen, but I can't get these guys from six hours away. <laughs> oh. Like, it's so weird. Their humor is just amazing, though. Wow, what a great crew of guys. And it's good that they, 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 they stick together, you know? It seems like they do a lot of work together, so that's nice. Well, there's a petition out right now to try to uh, to get them uh, to host uh, Saturday Night Live, and I'm like, why haven't they done that yet? Right, right. To get all of them in there? Holy cow, that'd be like two different sets of amazing improv sketch comedy actors coming together. Like, the ideas alone would, you could, you could fill three Saturday Night Live shows with that. That's, that's brilliant. Yeah. But, uh, no, um, but now getting back to what I was saying before about the, the, the rating system, like I said, I find it weird when um, people attack, move. There's a group in Los Angeles, and I'm not going to say who they are. I definitely don't want to give them any publicity. Uh, like I said, I come from a Christian household, but, yeah, I think these guys are assholes. Because they yeah. they base movies on a on a on Christian standards, but yet they're given four stars to junk like Fireproof. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, and and yet uh, I I noticed and I've had an argument with one of them on Twitter. They would call me a troll. They can call me whatever they want. Well, I don't care. <laughs> they didn't interview. They didn't review the Trailer Park Boys movies or Hyena Road, basically because they're Canadian films. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I say Hyena Road is a better movie than American Sniper all around. Mm-hmm. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. But um, I'm going to tell you a little story here. I don't know how much you're involved with charities, but um, um, after Robin Williams passed away, um, and that was that was a real sad thing. Yeah. Yeah, real, real big loss. Um, 
You remember the ALS challenge? Yes. The ice yeah. bucket challenge? Unfortunately, right now, my, my dad has ALS. And, uh, oh. Yeah. My dad's a real hard work, and I'm going to tell you, when I think of Christianity, my dad is somebody I look up to with it because uh, he always would, like, we get a lot of snow here in the wintertime, and he'd get up in the morning, he'd go plow people out, and he'd do it for nothing. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's what being a Christian is, you know, not this passing the collection plate around. Like these people in Los Angeles, I guess there was some, a riot, I guess, in Baltimore, I think, and they blamed it on the purge. And if you give them money, this won't happen again, you know? And like, give me a break. Yeah. <laughs> Had nothing yeah. to do with the purge. Yeah. But like, it's like the John Grisham thing, you know? He, he took Oliver Stone to court over natural born killers, but yet he wrote A Time to Kill. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I don't get that, and I can't stand these double standards. But anyway, when the ice bucket challenge happened, like I thought it was so inspiring. People were coming together, and they were helping out this uh, cause, and all these celebrities were getting involved. When Robin Williams passed away, a new one popped up called Doubt Fireface, and it dealt with a, um, something I grew up with, is, is you take a pie in the face, Right. For suicide prevention, you nominate three people. Yeah. And, yeah, and I, I think that's more entertaining than Ice Bucket over the head, you know? Sure. Yeah. Sure. And anyway, um, the daughter, or they're actually, I should say, the daughter of the person that owns this uh, publication, this uh, movie publication that bases movies around Christian values. These are people that are trying to get the production code back so that there will be no more R-rated films and no more this and that. Basically, they, they want you to view films the way they think they should be done. Right. Which, I'm sorry, but if Fireproof is their idea of the future of film, then I'm out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I... I the daughter of the head of that publication was following me on Twitter, and she posted a thing saying, I wonder what the next big challenge was. So I threw, a, I threw it out to her. I said, look, if I, cha- if I challenge you to do the uh, doubt fire phase, would you do it? And she says, right. I would have to nominate her first. So I did a video. And I took a pie in the face, and it wasn't that bad. And I nominated her, and I nominated a bunch of A-listers. And I nominated people I liked. Now, I didn't go after people. I wasn't out to be mean-spirited. Like, I nominated right. Emma Stone. I love Emma Stone. Yeah. Love Anna Kendrick. These are people I like, but I also think that they could do something like that. And I, the response I got from this bitch was, Great cause, but I'm not taking a pie in the face. But I hope this catches on, though. And I wow. Look, yeah, and this is a Christian organization. And she went on to yeah. interview Angelina Jolie the following week. Uh. She just unfollowed me on Twitter because um, I called her out on something. She was on there, and she posted something. goes, I guess this airline, blah, 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 didn't recognize my wedding dress. I guess I'll be follow, uh, flying Delta from now on. And I said to her, I said, what makes you think you should get um, special treatment because you're getting married? <laughs> and she unfollowed me. It's like, um, and I, I could care less if they call me a troll. I call them a bunch of liars who are using uh, Christianity for profit. Uh, man. These these are the battles, you know. It's 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 just it's just sad that, that that people need to get that that natty about the whole thing. It's 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 sad. Well, it's, I'll tell you, I did another one of those videos this year, and I nominated people from my the people I've interviewed, and I actually good. I actually had um, an actress from Santa Monica, California, one that a Canadian actress, who accepted and did a video. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I got a former Miss USA that's going to do it, and I got a bunch of others that are going to do it as well. That's cool. Yeah. I want to know, could I yeah. fire one out to you as well? I, You know, send it to me, and if I got the time, I'd, I'd definitely love to be a part of it. Well, I was thinking, too, you know, if you decide you want to nominate somebody, you know. I can I can throw it around myself. Yeah, absolutely. You could throw it out to Jennifer. You could send it <laughs> out to Sarah Michelle Geller. I I don't know that they, that they remember me, but I'll if if I can do it, I'll 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 make the effort. Absolutely, it's a good it's a good cause. It's a good uh, good charity. So definitely. 
Well, I, I, I battled depression most of my life. Not suicide. Um, I think there's a difference. I think it's a chemical imbalance. Right, right. Yeah. So um, I picked up and started uh, to go with this. And I know I've, I've helped uh, some of the causes that some of my guests have uh, been involved with as well. So my wife's shown gratitude towards them. Because, you know, um, I want to be more than just an interview. I want the people I interview to know that I'm behind them, you know. I'm, sure. Yeah, you want to know that they're appreciated. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, Jeepers. That's, that's a, that's a decent, decent gesture on your part. That's yeah. Good. I'm going to tell you, we're almost closing on two hours here, but I'm going to tell you, oh, I God. am so honored to have you on here. And Well, hey, thank you so much, Python. I, it's, it's, you've got a great show, and, and, and I had, I've, I've had a, a thoroughly enjoying, uh, enjoyable uh, conversation with you. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, I got a, a couple questions beforehand. Um, oh, let's, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm putting all my uh, interviews on YouTube. Now, right now, I've, I've only got, uh, I think, 13 of them up. I'm putting one up on YouTube a week. And when I put them on YouTube, I like to put some pictures along with the audio. Uh, would you mind very much if I use some headshots of you? Oh, sure. Go for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yours probably won't go on YouTube till probably early next year. Like, um, I'm putting them up in order that I've done them, and sure. you're number 38, and I just put number <laughs> 13 up. But it is going to go on the CHSR website um, probably within three weeks. I've got the second half of a band out of Dallas, actually. Uh, okay. I'm playing the second half of that this weekend, and I've got Zach Ward plays the week after that. Kudos. Yeah, and then I've got Tammy Stranach playing from uh, The Never Ending Story. And, yes, wow. Oh, yeah, wow. I got her. And her, th what's interesting about hers is hers is going to play on her birthday. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, perfect timing. Yeah, she's yeah. actually the same age as me. That's amazing. Wow, where does the time go? That's incredible. Well, I was born July 8th, and she was born July 31st. So, like, same year, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, there, and then, the, and then yours will go up after that. And yours is well, going to... Really? Yeah, just, just put a post on my, on my uh, Facebook page letting me know that it's up, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll shoot it out to all of my people. Yeah, it's going to play in two parts. Now, my show is on Sunday nights. Okay. And uh, you're in L.A., so, like, um, it's right now, it's almost 6 o'clock here. It's almost 2 o'clock where you are, huh? Right. right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's why I love interviewing people from L.A., you know? <laughs> I could do my day job and then, you know. Get get to us when you can, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 we'll be out here. <laughs> yeah. So um, yours is going to play in two parts, um, two, uh, two weeks' worth, and, um, and then it will... Uh, I'll be podcast putting it on my YouTube page come uh, probably early next year, you know? Okay, okay. And okay. another thing, too, uh, is there a way that I could get an autographed picture? Um, you know what? I send, it, send an S-A-S-E to me, okay. and I can, uh, I, can, I can get one to you. But I don't, I, I don't, I don't actually send out myself. I don't, I don't have a... Uh, uh, that that big uh, uh, a crew right now to to have stuff for that, so it, it would have to be through you to get it to you. Okay, I could do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah I could I can, do. Would I, you I, mind I'll, very I'll, much? I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll face I'll face you book you the address, and you can you can okay. send the um, you can send the envelope on. Would you mind if I added you on Facebook? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I thought I thought you were. Already a part, but yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah, I've got I've got a lot of you on. I've got a lot of my uh, interviewees on. Here's here's a sign of, a, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, <laughs> but my birthday was July 8th, and uh, you'd never believe how many people I interviewed sent me br birthday wishes. That's awesome. And I'm like, you know, yeah. I said if the journalists that do all these dirty attacks yeah, through gossip yeah. had known this. Yeah, this is what it's all about. Like, you've had a good time on here. Sure. Yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. You keep it casual. You keep it interesting. You keep it, you keep it interesting for us, and you, you seem to, to believe it's in, You seem to make us believe that it's interesting for you, and I think that's coming from a, 
from a, a, a loyal place. So that's that's that, I think that's what you you hold above uh, other interviewers. And, and, and hold on to that if you if if you can. I will. I'll most certainly. And I was wondering if you could do a plug for my show before you go. Sure. Uh, what what do you need? Just say that uh, you're listening to Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert, aka Python. <laughs> there you go. Are you are you still recording? Yeah, and just uh, state who, who you are, and then say you're listening okay. to Python's Paradise with. Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. Python. This is Todd Duffy, the annoying waiter with flair from the cult movie Office Space. You're listening to Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. The Python, on his amazing radio channel. Keep it tuned in. Yes, and by the way, before you go, I'm going to need you to come in on Saturday. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, we need you have you come in on Saturday, and and um, we're gonna need you to come in on Sunday as well. We had to let oh, some I, people go, oh, and oh, 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 okay. I'm I'm gonna torch this place. I'm gonna get fired. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and tell that Jennifer Aniston that if she wants to learn to express herself, right. she needs to wear more flair. <laughs> Get a room, you two. I love it. I, I was waiting tables about a year ago. I was working at a bowling alley, and uh, and and I got recognized. And they said, "Wait, well, you're you're the guy. You're the guy." And I said, "Yeah." My manager came up, and he said, "Hey, uh, I'm really sorry, but we've got a couple other uh, lanes we need you to get to. You, you know, you're spending too much time with these people." And I looked at the people, and they could tell. I could, you could see it in their eyes. They're like, oh, my God, it's coming. And I turned around, and I flipped them off. And I was like, get a room, you two. And he's a fan, too. So we got away with it. I didn't get fired. But it was one of those things that it just kind of follows me wherever I go, you know? When's Jennifer Aniston going to work at that bowling alley waiting tables Dude, with you? Oh, oh, my God, that would be awesome. Ah, I, was actually, I was on a vacation in Costa Rica about three and a half, four years ago. Uh, just some friends of mine uh, were saying, hey, we've got to get out of town. Come with us. Okay, great. And I went down there, and we were sitting in a, in a, in a pool uh, off, off on a beach somewhere, and, and some guy waves across the pool, and he goes, hey, were you in a movie called Office Space? <laughs> I mean, this is Costa Rica. Like, <laughs> it's, it's another country altogether. So uh, that, that movie has a, a lot of great... Uh, ties. And well, it, and well maybe I'm, they recognize Milton sitting on the beach with a little worm uh, shirt exactly. on. Exactly. <laughs> uh, no, no salt. No, no salt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Greg. It's it's been a it's been a real pleasure talking with you. It's been a real pleasure too, Todd. And um, I'm I'm glad you came on and uh, promoted Office Space and promoted each other. And boy, I did love that Barney story. I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if it's, if it's proper or if it's even usable, but uh, it's, it, it is a true tale from something I saw, so I thought I could share it with you. Well, there you go. Well, God bless you, man, and yeah. uh, thank you very much for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Have a great afternoon. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye.